everyone, Kathleen here, back by popular demand. I wanted to pop in and have a conversation. Um, and this one is about common words that we often experience around narcissistic abuse, around trauma bond, and all of that healing, and it's guilt remorse and regret. I know these myself. Um, so I wanted to start off and talk a little bit about my story just to kind of clarify how I experienced it. And, um, you know, I mentioned before that I've been married twice to narcissists. Well, the second one was a doozy. <laughs> it was a doozy. Um, and what I discovered is that this person has a habit of um, getting women out of the marriage with their spouse. Now, when I met this person, I was married at the time, was not looking in any way, shape, or form. Um, and was only talking about business stuff and all that. Well, this... This person up really chasing after me, you know, really pursuing me with every ounce of energy that he could, which is probably why he couldn't keep it up for so long in the end. But, you know, the poetry and the, uh, just all the compliments, all the love bombing, all the usual that goes with it. It was so strong, so powerful so manipulative and so believable and so intoxicating. I understand how, you know, we feel like we're on this pedestal, you know, like they put us high on this pedestal and we feel so amazing about ourselves. And I'll go back to again saying, why does this happen? Because sometimes we're not loving ourselves enough. But anyway, that's another story. So the story is, you know, there was all of this pedestal stuff, all of this extreme love bombing. This person was so very intelligent, charming, and determined to get their way. And I thought, you know, because what happened was it wasn't, it wasn't just about the relationship, but there was this deep feeling of soul purpose because we did similar work around therapy and healing and stuff so I thought okay we're meant to be together and we're meant to do this work together so it was really anchored in on a deep level on what felt like this soulmate twin flame whatever you want to call it we're meant to go down life's road together and do this work together and so it was about well, six months, I guess you could say, of major, like, blissful soulmate stuff. And when it changed fairly suddenly, kind of like the first one, after marriage, um, within weeks of getting married, it was like the devaluation started. All these put-downs, and it was really confusing. Like, wait, I thought we were soulmates or twin flames or, you know... This is our purpose. We started a business together. We ended up with three businesses together. And it was such a deep connection that I felt, and again, thought that it was like a soul connection and everything. And then the de devaluing started. And the reason why I'm getting into this conversation is that it's not about me, but it's about explaining the guilt. Because then what happened was I got slammed heavily with guilt because I had left my then husband for this person thinking that, well, and I, I spent a lot of time thinking about it. I thought, well, this is maybe the love of my life that I'm meant to be with and it's not fair to be with another person if that's not the love of my life. And, you know, I was rationalizing this whole thing and I kept trying to push back, but this person was so powerful with the idealizing that it was really hard to resist. It felt like this really strong magnet. And I kept trying to fight it for a while and then finally um, 
I kind of just gave in basically, although there were times I questioned it. It's funny when I look back because I think, you know, I, I had a lot of anxiety about it at the time. So I think I knew on some level that something was off. And some of you may look back and feel that way as well. Like, hmm, something didn't feel quite right. Is it too good to be true? In fact, at first, I thought he was a little obnoxious because he um, was so pushy about it. And then I just kind of got caught up in that whole uh, love bombing idealization thing. So the marriage happens, the devaluing starts, stuff that I hadn't seen before. This is where our confusion comes in, right? We really question ourselves and go, wait, did I miss something? You know, because now the personality is completely changed. Well, and we blame ourselves, right? I should have seen that. I'm a smart person. Hey, I'm college educated. I was a high level underwriter at one time and all this other stuff. I even looked at his background. I honestly did. I got online just because like, well, I don't know this person. So I got caught up in it. And then you know, boom, once they have you, it's like, well, I can be my true self now and I can act like a child and I can throw temper tantrums and I can, you know, put you down because now I realize you're not that valuable anymore. So now I can devalue you. So the guilt hit me really hard. And my ex at the time had struggled with it, my leaving, you know, it caught us both by surprise. I mean, I was not looking at all. And so I ended up experiencing several years of guilt because I felt guilty through the marriage because I knew on some level this wasn't right. Now that I'm seeing how this person really is, but it's interesting how we stay stuck, right? There were signs there. There were red flags. I've got an article about terminology there were red flags and we still kind of ignore it because we were so intoxicated by the love bombing, right? We were so drawn into it. So I really struggle with guilt because I, you know, being empathic, being insensitive, I felt bad for my ex because I thought, you know, I really uh, hurt this person. I think he really struggled hard with it. And I thought, well, it's meant to be, you know, I, I rationalize it and I kind of thought I forgave myself at the time. But I, I had, like I said, like several years of feeling deep guilt, regret and remorse because I thought he was a decent human being. He wasn't a narcissist. This was the ex before the ex. <laughs> <clears throat> There's been a few exes, so the ex before the ex, he was a decent guy, you know, he was a nice guy. I guess I was a little bored maybe, but I didn't really have any intention of leaving at that time. But I often call it the perfect storm. Uh, I had just turned 50. <laughs> I hate to talk about age, but I had just turned 50 at the time, and I think I was kind of wondering about is this all there is? And I had these big dreams and here comes this person and I'm thinking they're my soulmate and this is who I really should be with. But it's not like me to, you know, be, um, you know, to cheat on anyone or have an affair or anything like that. So it was out of character for me, but that's why I kind of cut it off. And I thought I need to, I need to force myself to make a decision. And because I think it was kind of a midlife crisis too. You know, what am I doing with my life? That played into it. So it was like, okay, I think I'm gonna do this and jump ship and go in this other direction because maybe this is where I'm meant to be and I don't wanna spend the rest of my life wondering what if. Um, so bear with me here because I'm gonna work through this stuff. <laughs> So anyway, I just want you to know that I struggled with these things myself. I spent years thinking about it. I kept going back to it. I shouldn't have left the X. I made a mistake. Um, I'm not 
at that point anymore, and I'll get to telling you why. But I want to also get into the definitions of those three words, guilt, remorse, and regret. So let's start with guilt. Guilt definition is feelings of deserving blame. Now these are my notes I'm looking at. Feelings of deserving, deserving blame, especially for imagined offenses or from a sense of inadequacy. This is really interesting. I'm going to unpack these definitions. So let's go back to guilt again. Feelings of deserving blame, especially for imagined offenses or from a sense of inadequacy. So I want to break that apart and first of all say um, we're not to blame. And this whole change in personality is what's so confusing and why we question ourselves because it's so different. It's night and day, right? From the love bombing to the devaluing, it's a completely different person. That's what really throws us off and gets us to question our sanity. And it makes it worse because they gaslight us and now we're really questioning our sanity and what we observed. Okay, so that adds into it, that adds into that mix of the guilt. And I want to say, um, we could not see the bad behavior because they fooled us with charming behavior in the beginning. And we need to fill the inadequacy by feeling adequate. Because <laughs> I'm breaking down the words of guilt, you know, feelings of deserving blame. We're not to blame. We were tricked, you know. And this isn't about being angry. Even I'm not even angry at this point. This is the truth. We got tricked. We uh, didn't realize who they really were. So we're not to blame. So we have to get away from the blame. And then we have to get away from the feeling of inadequacy. And one way is to tell ourselves, I am enough right? Get out of the inadequacy and tell ourselves, I am enough. So those are a couple things around the whole word guilt, what it means and how to turn it around. Now let's talk about remorse. The definition of remorse is a gnawing distress arising from a sense of guilt for past wrongs. So that ties back into the guilt, doesn't it? A gnawing distress arising from a sense of guilt for past wrongs. We think we did wrong. No, we thought we were doing the best we could at the time. And we used to have a saying in healing art school that everybody's doing the best they can with the tools they have at any given time. So at that time, with the way we felt and what we observed and all of the information we were given, we made the best decision that we thought was possible for us. So it's not, um, it's not a wrong. So we're in distress because we think it was wrong. Um, it all goes back to this confusing switcheroo that the narcissist does where they start with the idealization and then devaluing, you know, so it's like, again, two different personalities. Uh, and they tell us that we're wrong. We didn't observe that at all. So we ended up, we end up feeling like, why didn't I see it? Why didn't I see it? Well, it wasn't there. You know, we didn't miss anything. Sometimes there's some mild red flags, and especially when, when we're in the throes of the love bombing, um, we have a tendency to miss the red flags. Why? Because it's normal to wear rose-colored glasses when we're feeling this way. 
Um, so I made this note and I wrote, you couldn't have seen the devaluing when the narcissist was idealizing you because that's what drew you in. Their, pers uh, their changing personality is what creates the negative cesspool of emotions in us. <laughs> There's all this negativity, this guilt, this remorse, and of course regret. And it's, it's because of the, their changing personality. And why do they have this? changing personality is because they've got all their own unhealed baggage. They're like trying to fix it. They're trying to feel better. So it's this um, roller coaster ride of, well, I'm going to idealize this person. It's going to make me feel awesome about myself because it's not about you feeling awesome. It's about them feeling awesome because they feel terrible. And if they believe that you're awesome, then they must be awesome too. So that's why they do the idealization until they realize you're not perfect because nobody is. And then the devaluing starts. So all of this changing personality and then making you feel like an idiot because they're, um, they're gaslighting or doing gotcha games, making you angry and then telling you have an anger problem, all this manipulation is what causes all these horrendous and confusing feelings. So we have guilt, we go to the remorse, the regret. Let's talk about regret for a minute. So regret is sorrow aroused by circumstances beyond one's control or power to repair. That is such an awesome definition. Let's read it again. Sorrow aroused by circumstances beyond one's control or power to repair. As sensitive people, we want to fix things, don't we? We're people pleasers. We want them to feel better. We want ourselves to feel better, which has a tendency to happen when they feel better. So we like to control this situation and we would like to fix things. We probably like to fix the narcissist. That's what we're used to doing. We're used to making everything better. You may be in a profession where you make things better, <laughs> where you're a healing kind of person, or maybe you're that way with rescue animals. I've done that myself. We want to be helpers, want to be kind. We want to fix but we can't control it and we end up burning ourselves out. We have to get past this sorrow of the regret of these, the situation that's not in our power. So we need to let go of control, know that we can't repair it because a narcissist has to fix themselves. And they're not going to do it. So we have to let go of that. We certainly have to let go of any thoughts around trying to help them. We can only work on ourselves. This is my solution for eliminating narcissistic abuse is working on ourselves. So when we heal these things and we don't attract it in again, when we heal our past trauma, right? when we love ourselves and then we're not going to attract in another narcissist. Here's what I want to say in the end too about all of this experience. Like why dear Lord, did I go through this? I'd said this over the years, you know, I had lost two babies. One was stillborn. One was premature never had children and I had to really come to terms with it and what helped me on a deep level on a soul level if you will is that everything happens for a reason I thoroughly believe this this is the conclusion that I've come to after all the losses the divorces and everything that I've been through so we ask ourselves what's the lesson we're getting out of this now for me, I feel so passionate about helping 
women out there with this because I feel a strong empathy about it. I feel so strong about how difficult the struggle is and all those negative emotions, the guilt, the remorse, the regret, regret. I get it. So for me, I feel like this happened so I could help others, which actually makes me feel good about it. Are you learning to love yourself more? Are you learning to set boundaries so that people don't walk all over you? I often talk about my doormat story where the psychologist said, excuse me, do you have a, the word doormat written on your forehead? You know, when we dig deep into this, there's a reason why. And I know that we're all learning in this classroom of life. And it, it's helped me with healing. Um, but also how I help others heal is to end these feelings and to get out of our head and into our heart, which is where the deep healing happens because we keep ruminating, you know, we feel the guilt, we feel the remorse, you know, we feel the regret and we keep spinning our wheels. Um, and we stay stuck and we can stay stuck in it for years, which I don't want that for you. Um, so anyway, getting out of our head, getting out of the ruminating, going deep to the healing, we get through it faster. We understand it faster. We heal the wounds faster. Uh, <clears throat> so if you're tired of the ruminating and you're tired of going over these emotions in your head and trying to understand and still feeling caught in the trauma bond, all that swirling stuff from the narcissist, all the gaslighting and other games, they keep us stuck and feeling bad about ourselves and wishing we could have changed it, wishing we hadn't done it in the first place. And oh my gosh, I spent 30 years with this person. I still believe there's a reason for it. But I want to help you to go deep and heal so you can move on and get unstuck. So I am going to, once again, post a link to a call with me because... I do offer a 10 week coaching package one-to-one -one, where I pull tools out of my virtual toolbox, whether it's paper tools, I've got intuitive tools and we work together one-to-one -to -one on how you're feeling that week and what we need to work on to get you moving forward as well as clarity on your direction, feeling good about yourself. And that's what I want for you. That's why I'm here. And it's honestly my purpose. It's totally my purpose after everything I've been through. So anyway, I'm going to post that in the comments. If you would like to talk about it, see if working together is a good fit for you. Talk about where you're at, where you want to go, how I can help. Let's get some clarity. So I hope that this information has helped you and given you some insight and hopefully releasing blame here and, you know, these um, emotions that just keep swirling around and swirling around. Um, hopefully something I've said here has triggered something in your heart and in your mind where you're going, okay, that makes sense. I don't have to keep pointing the finger at myself and feeling horrible and blaming myself and wishing I could have had control over the situation because you can't, you can't control a narcissist. They're all over the place. And since they're not like us and maybe not like anybody we've known, although some people, not myself, but I know some people who had narcissistic parents and we can also keep getting caught in that bond over and over again. Um, so let's stop the cycle. If that's the case for you, let's talk about it. 
whatever you've been through and uh, get clear on helping you to move forward. So anyway, thanks so much for joining me. And again, I hope that my story and those words and those definitions and thoughts around how we can turn those definitions around to our advantage has given you some peace of mind. It's not an overnight fix, okay? So we'd all like to wave, wave a magic wand, but I'd love to help you get through it faster than you can on your own. So anyway, thanks again for tuning in. I want to send love to you wherever you are on this planet, sending some healing energy your way. I'll be back in a couple days for a meditation because that helps us to also get out of our head and get some healing going and to de-stress and to breathe for a moment. So anyway, thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you again soon. Uh, feel free to leave a comment. If you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks again, everyone. See you later. Have a great rest of your day.